These past couple weeks, I've been working on standardizing the way that we carry out our service calls. It's a really good practice to have it written down for someone who might need to refer to it someday. It's nice to have a system for AC and heating service calls, but at the same time, we never want to take the personal aspect out of each call either. We hire our technicians for their personality and train them to become great service technicians. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. So how do we keep our service calls structured while keeping the family feel to it? At Fox Family Heating and Air, we focus daily on treating our technicians as good as we can. We know that by treating them with the respect and kindness that they deserve, they'll be able to take care of our customers the same way. We feel that goes a long way in reaching those goals of a structured service call, but being personable at the same time. Plus, it's almost impossible to expect every service call to go the same way. There are too many variables when it comes to residential and commercial HVAC services because every customer's concerns are unique to them. But at the same time, if our customers refer us to their friends and family to service their HVAC system, we want the flow of the call to be very similar from home to home and business to business. Our techs have a routine that includes the pre-arrival, the arrival, approaching the door, making contact, the conversation, the diagnosis, making the repair, and completing the call. Very briefly, I can explain some of the aspects of our service call that should be standard from technician to technician in the hopes that no matter who comes out to service your HVAC system, the total experience will be the same. On the pre-arrival, we always call our customers when we're on the way. If we can give them a 15 to 30 minute heads up, it sort of takes us off the clock for a customer who's expecting us. The pre-arrival also includes us taking a few minutes to stop a couple blocks down the road and gather ourselves after the drive to the job site. It's important for a tech to leave the stresses of their day behind them. Traffic, other service calls, and life in general can make things tough for anyone. At the arrival, we just wanna make sure that our techs park on the street in front of the home or business. It's important for us to not take the customers for granted and think that we can just pull up in their driveway. Sometimes it is necessary to park in the driveway, but we always want to get permission first. On our approach to the home, I want to make sure that we're not walking across the lawn to get to the door. Coming up the driveway or sidewalk is best for keeping the home clean once we do get inside. We also want to come to the front door. It's just unorthodox to come to the side or back door to greet our customers. And since everyone wants to feel like they're the most important person on that technician's mind at the time of arrival, talking or texting on the phone is avoided. When we're making contact with the customer at the door, it's important for us to be aware of certain things. Not everybody wants to shake hands with a technician when they arrive. We can be known to work on some pretty dirty things during the day, and some people know that. But if someone does initiate the handshake, we always welcome it. We also ask our customers if they'd like us to wear our shoe covers to protect their floors. It's important for us to respect people's homes and businesses by just focusing on the task at hand. We understand that people's homes are private and that everyone's lifestyles are different. So making comments about cleanliness or particular items in the home is not what we do. So that sort of respect goes a long way with our customers and they feel comfortable with us in their homes. When we're having the conversation, one thing I tell my techs is that we've heard our customers' problems with their AC a million times, right? They're usually very similar from one customer to the next, but it's important for Fox Family that we stop talking and listen to the customer's concerns without interrupting. After they're done telling us what's going on with their system, we might ask some more specific questions to help us narrow down the problem, like how long has it been happening? Uh, has there been a power outage in your neighborhood lately? Like brownouts or blackouts? Maybe somebody took out a telephone pole? Who does the preventive maintenance on your system? And is there any other history to the system that you know about? We also want to learn about the areas of the home that might have problems going on. Perhaps there's a room in a certain part of the house that's warmer or cooler than the others, or they're having air quality issues in the home, things like that. So with these extra questions, we're just trying to communicate to our customers by saying, 
we're always on the lookout for ways to make your system run better, last longer, or be safer for you and your family. So if I see something like that while I'm here, can I bring it to your attention? Some people say no, and that's totally fine. We'll get in and get out in a timely manner. But not asking puts us in a position where some customers might think that we weren't being thorough enough on the call to foresee these other problems. Once we've diagnosed what's going on with the system, we try to be as thorough as possible and let the customer know anything that we might have seen wrong with the system. For instance, the control board of a system might need to be replaced, but the capacitor on the blower motor, which is still working, is almost out of stored energy, which will prevent it from regulating the voltage to that motor. The heat exchanger or firebox of the furnace keeps the spent gases in those hot chambers and the flue pipe, which then exhaust out of the rooftop. Let's say you have a bad inducer motor, which is preventing your system from running. Well, if the firebox or the furnace has failed, we feel like our customers would want to know since it involves their system running safely. All in all, I tell my technicians to suggest all the repairs needed as if it were their own home's HVAC system. We just want to bring the HVAC system back to manufacturer specs and keep the residents of that home safe. And that particular home might have multiple repairs needed to get it back up and running in tip top shape. Another unique thing about Fox Family is we want to make sure to protect the homeowner who might be using this house as a rental. One way we do this is by only talking to the owner about the repairs, since they're the ones paying for it. The landlord tenant relationship can be dicey at times, and if we divulge repair information to the tenant, but the owner decides not to make that repair, it can stir up the relationship, which is not what we want to contribute to. We understand that maybe only one repair can be made that day. Our customers' budgets are different from one to another. We simply make the suggestions and do the work that our customers approve. When we're making the repairs, we can usually go right out to our service truck and get the parts that we need. Keeping our trucks stocked with all the right parts gets our customers heating and cooling again quicker. Sometimes a special part needs to be ordered and delivered to our shop. When that part comes in, then we'll make the appointment to come back out and replace the part for the same price we agreed upon on the first visit. Keeping the customer informed along the way during the delivery is another way that we provide that personal touch with our customers. After the repair, we clean up the service area and try to make it like we were never there. Hopefully, this will make the whole repair process go smoother for the customer. When it's time to complete the call, we try to sit down at the kitchen table and go over everything that we've done. We mention our warranty on the parts that they're buying, and we also offer to come out and perform the preventive maintenance on their system to keep their system running as long as possible. Our technicians are asked to collect the money for the repairs that they made that day, as billing can get very complicated for us at the office. The only other thing that I ask our technicians to do is to make sure our customers know how much we appreciate them and to thank them for trusting us with their HVAC system. Having a standardized way of running a service call keeps every technician who comes to a customer's home very similar. That way, when we're referred to friends and family, they get the same experience each time. All the personality and conversation during the rest of the call comes genuinely from our technicians. That's why we hire our technicians for their personalities and not so much for their skills. Skills can be taught, but a great personality can't. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe and check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.